The Flying Fortress is a brand new troop in Clash of Clans, which is 100 troop capacity. It is totally worth it though. I will show you attacks, breaking down its mechanics to explain exactly how it works. You unlock this new troop in Balloon Lagoon, and as part of the clan capital, you will also be unlocking new defenses here, which I will go over, and a new spell as well. However, the brand new troop, we've never had this in the home village or the builder base, is the Flying Fortress. Here on the developer build, I have the Flying Fortress Yard to level 5, which gives me access to the level 5. Five flying fortress. I explained all of this in my video introducing the clan capital. But the maxed level flying fortress has 18,000 hit points. To give you somewhat of a reference point, a super giant only has 4,200. The Flying Fortress is so much more than that. Not only does it have that huge amount of hit points, the damage is also incredible, and it spawns units as well, as explained in its Skeleton Crew special ability. This is the Skeleton Glider, in which you can get up to 18 of these spawned, and when the Flying Fortress is destroyed, you also have 30 ground skeletons to hopefully even just clean up the area. The reason I say that is the Flying Fortress is defense targeting. This means, remember the minion horde from yesterday's video? They are good to clean up behind the Flying Fortress. Let's actually take two Flying Fortresses to show you. You also unlock the Rocket Balloons within Balloon Lagoon. This is as a clan when you repair the runes of the specific barracks, in this case being the Rocket Balloon Barracks within Balloon Lagoon. You unlock the troop, and then as you upgrade that barracks, that is how you upgrade the troop itself or your clan. For this troop, you get two of these for every rocket balloon that you cook up. So I will be taking four of them, since I'm cooking up two, into this attack. The third and final troop unlocked within the Balloon Lagoon District is the Skeleton Barrels. You gain three of these when you cook one of them up. And to finish off the army, we might as well take a Battle Ram. This can be good to break open walls and expand the deployment area. In terms of spells, you unlock one spell within the Balloon Lagoon District, and this is the Lightning Spell. It works exactly the same as in the home village. A lot of the troops and spells that are within the clan capital, we've also seen in the home village and builder base. That's why I'm focusing in more on the flying fortress. Jumping ahead a little bit, the frost spell is unlocked in builder's workshop. So I'll be explaining that district in the latter half of the video, but let's take one to show you the mechanics now. I'll show you the flying fortress in isolation first, troop deployment being completely different here in the clan capital but with it being defense targeting that is what it will go to ground based defenses not able to shoot at the flying fortress itself but when the skeleton gliders hit the ground then the ground based defenses would shoot at those so it's a mixture of ground and air however clearly it is the air targeting defenses you need to be mainly concerned about Splash damage, not going to do any real damage to the Flying Fortress, as you can see with the rocket artillery. It is the high fire rate point defenses and mainly the single target Inferno that will be dealing most of the damage. So I will show you in attacks how to deal with this. You either need to distract or use one of the other various methods because as it beams up, the rest is history. You know what happens, Flying Fortress will go down, but it does then spawn those 30 skeletons, which can be very useful to move back over to the non-defensive buildings that the Flying Fortress missed, or maybe just clean up anything else as well. As long as there's no splash defenses or traps, those skeletons can do a lot of work. Let's do an attack, fully take down this Balloon Lagoon District to show you the strategies I like to use with the Flying Fortress. I'm going to enter from the right hand side because the single target Infernos are at the top. They are your major threat. So I'm going to try and take those down first. Let's begin with just one Flying Fortress. I can also show you the troops that you unlock in Balloon Lagoon, as well as the Frost spell, which you unlock in Builder's Workshop. I will show you that next. Alongside the single target Infernos, it is the Rapid Rockets and the Air Defense which you need to look out for because they are high powered, very fast, but they do a lot of work on the Flying Fortress. The good thing about the map dynamically expanding is you can be a little bit surgical. Let's actually use the Frost spell here. It does not act like a freeze spell in the main village, 
that would be incredibly overpowered because this lasts the entire raid. So it just slows down the defenses, but it does last into the next attack as well. I'm going to send in my other flying fortress once I get to the single target infernos, try and basically attack one single with one flying fortress. So let's attack up to the top one. And a great thing you can do is just reset them with the lightning spell. Then keep an eye on the skeleton gliders because they might actually distract the single target inferno. Do not use your lightning to reset it if it's not actually on the flying fortress. Let's use the other lightning spell here. We can also send in the rocket balloons and the skeleton barrel up towards that air defense. Try and protect the flying fortress. Would be nice if this flying fortress could take out the air defense and the rapid rockets to help in the next attack. I'm going to sneak in that barbarian as well to break open the wall. That might just help with the deployment area. Should we take these buildings down? Rapid rockets looks like it will fall. But in order to protect the skeletons that will spawn from the flying fortress, we need this bomb tower down. Looking good. Come on. Down it goes. So we should get the air defense and we've got a big deployment area now for the next attack. This can be one of the downsides of the Flying Fortress. It is so massive. It has so many hit points that you could be left over with just the Flying Fortress and nothing in order to supplement it towards the end of the attack. So it is something you need to be a little bit cautious on. And that is why sometimes I only bring one flying fortress, which I will show you next. 39% though, not too bad. We can scout the base in between. Frost spell still in place. Granted, not really going to do anything for us. But why don't we edit the army? We don't really need the lightning spells. There's no singles now. So we can take the healing spell, which we introduced in yesterday's video. Let's drop one of the flying fortresses, but I'm going to stack up on rocket balloons and minions. Flying into the heart of the base is probably the most useful. So I'm going to use the frost spell early to try and get... There we go. Hopefully the rapid rockets, air defense, and the spear throws, which we did. Flying fortress, get yourself across. And once it starts tanking that area, because the defenses can still fire, they're just lower under the frost spell, then I will send in my rocket balloons. So there we go. I'm actually going to save onto just a couple of them. I'd send some minions as well, but because we have some splash on the back end, I don't want to send in too many minions. Ooh, maybe I could have used the healing spell. I'm actually going to. My rocket balloons took a lot of damage. Probably should have used that beforehand, but never mind. Let's try and get the rocket balloons onto the rapid rockets there. That would be nice to get down to protect the flying fortress. That was absolutely beautiful, actually. And with that splashdown, let's send in the minions. Hmm. I think I'm going to send some up top in order to clean up. Yeah, let's just send the rest in and see what we get. I think we might be able to get this in three attacks because there are no single target infernos or air defense on the back end of the base. Maybe I could have used my healing spell down the bottom here since it will go into the next attack as well. But honestly, I think we have so much of the base down that we should be able to get this in the next attack. So we are up to 66% and probably saving the best to last. My favorite strategy with the Flying Fortress, two minion hordes, two rocket balloons, two flying fortresses, but let's probably use the healing spell down the bottom here and let's hold off on the other flying fortress for the minute just to make sure we do have enough rocket balloons once we've got the splash defense out of the way i can then send the minions in there we go now i think for the frost spell let's see if we can get both of the rapid rockets or the rocket artillery sorry still getting used to all of these defenses and Honestly, I don't think it matters. We could send the Flying Fortress in at the bottom. We could send it in at the top. Let's just send it in at the top. And yeah, let's send some minions in at the bottom to help support this Flying Fortress. You can notice that since the wall is not broken and we don't have a jump spell, that's why the deployment area is all of the way back towards the other side of the base because ground troops cannot get direct access to this area of the base and that is when it expands the deployment area. Flying Fortress OP wiping out the back end of this base. Look at those little minions as well just picking off the rocket artillery which probably is my favorite defense in this entire clan capital. I think the graphics of it just look so good and let's move across to Builders Workshop because the Flying Fortress has wiped out this base three attacks. I'm honestly pretty happy with that. 
with regards to Builder's Workshop, you unlock this at Capital Hall level 5. By the way, you unlock Balloon Lagoon at Capital Hall level 4, forgot to mention that. And when your clan first arrives, you will be able to repair the runes of the Raid Cart Barracks, the Super Pekka Barracks, and the Frost Spell Factory. You can level these up as well, which levels up the troops or spell within it. The Raid Cart Barracks is essentially a group of the Siege Cart, Cannon Cart from the Builder Base, and four Barbarians. I personally like the squads that we are receiving for many of the troops in the clan capital. Super Pekka, just the Super Pekka from the Builder Base. That's why I'm not going into any great depth on a lot of these troops. The Frost Spell, I already showed it in the last attack, but check out the description. Freeze water to walk over it with the Frost Spell. Let's show you this in action. You can notice that the deployment area is blocked by both the walls and the water. Yes, I could deploy troops everywhere else because this is the developer build. I've just set this up. But by using the Frost Spell, it expands the deployment area across to the other side since ground troops can access that area. Not only does it expand the deployment area, the troops can just walk across this. So if I deploy them on this side, they will be able to walk over the water. By the way, that is the brand new Zap Trap, which I think is incredibly powerful. Again, I haven't gone into any major detail in the defenses because there's that many of them, but they operate very similar to the ones in the home village. However, we can allow the Super Pekka to walk directly over the water. And this is a brilliant strategy. The Super Pekka and the raid carts behind them. Sometimes you can throw in some Super Wizards to get a little bit of splash damage. And there's also a troop we will be revealing in tomorrow's sneak peek that you can use behind the Super Pekka for great effect. By the way, I know I mentioned the rocket artillery, but the blast bow as well, very nice graphics. And I'll break down all the defenses in a future video. Some of you might have been wondering because it's about that time of the month where we reveal the next month's hero skin. It is the Minor Queen. This will be in next month's gold pass. I really liked the Golem King, so I'm glad to see more hero troop skins and if you do want to support the channel before purchasing the gold pass or anything else in supercell games you can click the c in the top right of the shop here in clash of clans enter code judo before purchasing and that helps to support the channel as supercell give us a very small kickback at no extra cost to you so it's very much appreciated my friends however in tomorrow's sneak peek video we will be covering the remaining districts and the new troops and spells within it if you missed my explanation of the clan capital. The video has been linked on your screen. I'm sure you'll find it useful. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.